Hey, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, we have this game. Kind of just get to know people, okay. and I want to play it with y'all. Can I? Okay. All right. Yeah. Hold on. What is your name? Emily. I'm Stan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What is your name? Taylor. Taylor and Emily. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Can you hold this? Yeah. Then you can hold this. So we have three levels. Each level kind of gets deeper with questions. And level one's icebreakers, level two is confessions, and level three is just getting deep. I'm just gonna get you to pick a random one and you read it and answer it. Okay. Who do you love most in life? Um, my dog Kona and my boyfriend. Okay, what about you? My mom, because she's my best friend. Who do I love most in life? I would say my brothers, them two right there. They're triplets. I think I love them the most. I'm just Aww. closest with them with anybody I know, so. Yeah. All right, now it's level two. I'm gonna get you to pick it. Okay. Mm. All right. What's a memory you never want to let go of? Mm. Probably the day we adopted my little sister. It was an Sorry. emotional day, but I was young, so. We're actually adopted. All three of you? Yeah. Oh, wow. How old's your sister? Eight. When did she get adopted? Six, seven years ago. She was young, so like one or two. How so, old were you guys when you were adopted? I don't know. We were told six, five, but like I feel oh. like we were seven. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we were seven. <laughs> yeah. All right, what about you? I think you should go first. You think you should go first? Because <laughs> I'm still thinking. What's a memory I never want to let go of? I'm going to be real transparent with this one. So about a month ago, we came here to FSU. I met, the, met this girl in a hammock. <laughs> I helped her set it up and stuff, and then I just boldly asked her if I could sit in it with her. And so she said, yeah. Oh, and that's so sweet. We ended up sitting in there for like five hours. And oh my gosh. Yeah. You still talk to her? No. Oh no. <laughs> for some reason, she ghosted me. I don't know why. Oh, like, I really don't so know why. We, we were just like really so much, it was crazy. Talking for five hours, that's a long time. Yeah, especially like meeting them for the first time too. But yeah, that's a memory I never, never want to let go of. I want to hear your answer. Um, I went on a trip over spring break with my family. We body surfed the waves for like probably three hours straight. So much fun. There were like s turtles swimming below us and we saw like a whale in the background. It was like the coolest thing ever. That is so yeah, cool. never want to forget that memory. All right, we're going to go to level three. These are like getting deep. I guess I'm going to make you pick it. Okay. What are the toughest demons you're fighting? Wow. <laughs> you want to go first, Emily? Sure, I guess so. Mine are simple. Anxiety, loneliness, depression. When does it hit the most? At night, when she's not in the dorm and I'm sitting there alone. I really want to go home. I'm really homesick. How do you usually deal with it? <clears throat> I cry a lot and she just watches me. No, I do not. <laughs> That's relatable. Yeah. What about you? I'd probably just say self-image, like okay. loving yourself, like fully. So okay. I feel like the ones I'm finding are recent. Recently, I've been feeling like really unfulfilled and I don't know why. I've always felt really good about like what we do. Usually it's stuff like this. We kind of talk to strangers, yeah. make people's days. We try to, but recently it hasn't been like hitting at all. Like I felt a little bit empty, yeah. but I've just been taking a step back, just observing my thoughts. I journal a lot now. I'll just do what I call brain dumps, where it's, I just write all my thoughts. That's so healthy. You do that? No, I used to. I haven't done that in a while. I, I think I think that might help with like... Me? Yeah. yeah, I have a journal sitting in our room. I just have never used it. It's <laughs> just totally sitting should. there. I think tonight you should just say fuck it and just do it. Just, she's going to be gone again tonight. Look, I'm going to be all by myself. That'd be a great time to do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, those are my demons. What y'all think? Uh, that was good. I like the game. Really? It's fun. It's a good game for us because we're deep thinkers. We yeah, sit in our we, dorm and oh, we talk yeah. for hours about stuff. We love it, too. Yeah. We love talking. Hey, excuse me. I have this game called How Deep Will You Go? I've seen you before. Have you? Well, what's your name? Madison. Madison, I'm Cody. Sorry, you got to play this game? Yeah, I am. Nervous. You are? <laughs> no, don't be nervous. Go ahead and pick level one. Okay. All right, what's something you did with pure kindness but didn't tell anyone? I'm a cashier, so um, they didn't have the money, so I used my Apple Pay to pay for it. Um, I guess that's my account, but so this guy came up to us. We, we were playing this game with each other, uh -huh. and like this guy pulled up, and he was like, hey, I just got out of prison today. And like he was pressing for some money, and he was like, uh, I'm gonna be able to get to Cervantes, which is like a street. It was a little fishy, but we were like, you know what, fuck it, let's just each yeah. give him like 10 bucks. And then he kept like trying to ask for more, and I was like, no, because he was trying to get a hooker. He didn't tell us that until we were already doing it, so like, and then also I think like with kindness, like, <clears throat> you know, you never know like anybody that's genuine. So it's like you want to be kind, but you just don't know people's true intentions. It's going to go to level two, kind of like confessions. You get it. <clears throat> when is a time you felt the most secondhand embarrassment? 
Oh, let's go with uh, Keith Wan. So this is another member, and mm -hmm. he had a show last Saturday because he's a musician. When he had the mic, it wasn't on. And like, I felt a little bit embarrassed for him. I wasn't there, but I saw a video, and like, I could tell the mic wasn't on. That's the oh. best I got right now. Oh, I can think of one. So I do Instacart on the side, but me and my boyfriend were doing an Instacart order. He had a bottle of wine. And so he asked him, you know, hey, can I have your ID? And then my boyfriend like walked off with the wine. <laughs> he forgot to give it to him. And he was like, hey man, where's my wine? He's like, what you doing? And I was like, yeah, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, I want it to be a good one. All right, oh. What past tra <clears throat> trauma do you still deal with today? Um, this one is like really bad. So I'm really short. I'm like only four nine. So when I was like 10 years old, my dad would make me drink milk in front of him. And he was like, you can't leave until you finish because he thought that me drinking milk every day would make me grow. In what way was it traumatic? I don't know, it just made me feel like being short was a bad thing. I mean, my dad is short, my mom is short. Yeah, <laughs> and it used to make me feel really insecure. But, um, you know, I'm confident with my height now, so I'm tiny but mighty. From my experience, guys like short girls, so. Yeah, my boyfriend, he loves <laughs> it, so. <laughs> I would say my traumatic experience is uh, unexpected trauma, because I feel like I don't have any, but mm. like I always find myself backing out of stuff. So we got taken away from my mom. Whenever mm. we were like, four oh y'all are brothers. Yeah, we're triplets. So we got taken away from her because she got arrested, and I feel like we have trauma from that. Mm -hmm. But I just haven't realized it, and I realize it a little bit sometimes, mm -hmm. like especially with uh, like manipulation. I feel like we we're manipulating a lot to not know what was going on, and I feel like that's why I hate manipulation so much. So when people try to manipulate me, I don't even want to talk to them anymore. Well, I'm sorry that happened. That's cool. I don't like it's weird. I don't really have a lot of emotion towards it, you know. Mm -hmm. We actually met her after 15 years when we turned 18. So it was weird. Like we we're not emotional like that. So yeah. I guess that's a, a trauma of it. Is like we don't really show emotion and we don't have a lot of emotion. Just that whole experience. Mm -hmm. It's probably past, past trauma. Yeah. I don't know why talking about that made me shake up a little yeah. bit. <laughs> but, I'm uh, so glad y'all decided to come to me. I'm glad you said yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I would see your YouTube channel and I would be like, I wonder like what I would say in that situation. And like now y'all came up to me and I'm like, <laughs> Yo, bro, are you down to play a quick game real quick, man? Uh, I gotta get to class, but maybe after. I got I'm you, like, I got yeah, you. Hey, you have a good one though, man. Too, yeah. He's not coming back. What's your name? Ethan. So are you familiar with who we are or anything? No, I have no idea who you guys are. So you literally <laughs> just walked up and said, what are y'all doing? Yeah, I mean, I, he he asked me to like come play before class, but I had to get to class, so I was like... Oh, what the hell? I, I was walking back after. Oh, yeah. how'd your class go? It went well. It was pre-calc. Gotcha. Right, Ethan? Let's just randomly pick one. Yeah. Ethan. Gotcha. Icebreakers. What has life taught you recently? The uncomfortable things aren't as uncomfortable as I think. So I realized, especially with myself, we all have this zone of confidence and comfort. And I've realized that when you break the initial barrier, you want to keep being confident and you want to keep doing uncomfortable things. So I got you. What about you? Um, if I had to say like one general generalization is like don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like you can really like something or really like a group of people but don't stick to doing the same thing. Like, keep your options open. Like, especially for me, like, I'm a freshman here, so, like, I'm just trying to, like, figure stuff out, get involved and stuff like that. Hey, all right, I'll get that one back. And we're gonna do level two. Just pick one. All right. All right, you first. When's the last time you cried and why? Um, I don't cry often at all. Yeah. Um, I think last time I cried was eighth grade. Really? Yeah. Wow. And How old are you now? 20. 20, okay, yeah. so it's a minute, yeah. yeah. So in eighth grade, I think the last time I cried was when I got broken up with by my girlfriend at the time. Damn. And I've never cried since. Wow. Have you had a girlfriend since or no? Nah. nah okay. That's probably why though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you? Um, if I had to like point out a time in my life where I was like crying for like days, it would be like sophomore year, my grandfather passed away. I don't know if you've heard it of uh, Lewy body dementia. It starts off like really, really slow and like it, it's not really like necessarily deadly at first, but it just progresses really quick. And like by the time that like he was in the hospital dying, like he just completely forgot who I was and like who my family was. So that was really like the shittiest part of it all, honestly, just like I was super close with him and then I couldn't even really say goodbye because he didn't even know me anymore. He was just like, he had no idea who I was. He had no, no idea who my dad was like, it was sad, but... It is sad. Yeah. You think it still affects you? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
you know, I still like think of him every day. Just like certain stuff remind me of him. Definitely remember him in a good way though. Appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, yeah. But now we're gonna get to level three, the right. deepest ones. All right. This. What was the hardest goodbye in your life? You gonna say your eighth grade girlfriend or not? <laughs> no, fuck you. <laughs> I hope it doesn't sound messed up. I'm adopted and I didn't meet my birth mom again until I was 18 mm -hmm. and we were adopted, three of us, when we were like five. The life I had where I had one mom, mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was gonna be like having two and so I didn't really wanna have two, quote yeah, unquote. So that was a hard goodbye at the time. Yeah. But now I understand that my birth mom actually does love me. I never really knew that. I would wonder who she was and what she was doing now, but hardest goodbye was living a life of like only having to think about one mom. How about yeah. you? Um, obviously, like my grandpa is like definitely one of my hardest goodbyes. But if I had to choose another, it would have to be like leaving like my best friend because we're going to separate colleges. Like the final last few weeks, like I was in my hometown before coming up here. Like I just spent every day with him. Like we would just go to the gym together, like get food together, do whatever. And we were both just like dreading, like knowing like we're not gonna see each other literally till like Thanksgiving. I've known him since like preschool. We've just stayed tight all the way through up high school. So that was definitely tough. Like definitely hard saying goodbye to him, but yeah. Oh yeah, bro. Appreciate sharing yeah. that. All right. Ethan, appreciate yeah. it, bro. Thanks for your time, man. Thanks, bro. Yeah, nice meeting you, boys. Nice meeting you too. Hey, excuse me. I was wondering if you aren't too busy. We are doing like a video playing like this deep card game we have. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you want to be a part of it. Yeah, of course. All right, man. What was your name? I'm Marissa. Marissa? Brandon. Brandon, nice to meet you. It's good to meet you too. All right, so just pick one of these. Who do you love the most in life? I think for me it's probably my mom. Okay. She's always been there for me, and she's always helped me through like the rough times, and you know, she's always been very supportive for me. That's sweet. All right, I love my parents too, but right now I probably have to see my girlfriend, Anna, because she's- So cute. Yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> Anytime I'm down, she's probably the only person I actually like, like would be sad in front of, you know, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Like I'm super myself around her, everything. So it's just really so cool. So cute. <laughs> cool. How long have you guys been dating for? Three years. But I'm grateful for everybody else. <laughs> okay, let's pick one of these. What's something you would be judged for if people knew? You go first. I don't know, I gotta think. <laughs> I gotta think on that. That's a hard I one. I feel like I have to also. I hate that I do this, but I judge probably everyone in my head. <laughs> like every person I look at, I just judge them. I'll say it out loud sometimes, like as a joke maybe, but mm -hmm. it's still fucked up. So I try not to judge people. But yeah, something to work on. Yeah. I mean, nobody's perfect, so you know. Yeah. All right, what about you? Probably how I feel like I find it hard to connect with people mm -hmm. on like a deeper level. Like how you talk about with like your girlfriend, Helena. Like you're very like close with her, you're able to connect with her. I feel like for me, I find that difficult to open up to other people because it's hard to feel like that vulnerable with somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's probably something I feel like people would judge me pretty hard if they knew like, oh, like I don't actually trust you or like I don't really know how close I can really be to you. But, so do you yeah. think you have like anyone in your life that you could like be vulnerable to? Yes, I do. Obviously my mom, like I said before, yeah. but I have some really close friends. Unfortunately, none of them go to this school, but I know I can always like truly be with, like myself with them and they go to like all over the country, which sucks, but yeah, no. we're gonna we're gonna find people here. I'm not worried about it. All right, It'll be good. Now here's the third level. This is probably the deepest one, depending on the question you get. When do you feel most like yourself? I think there's two answers for me. I think when it's with my close friends, I feel like I'm truly who I am, like who I'm meant to be, like fully. The other option is when I'm in nature. Like I'm, I'm the hammock girly. I yeah. <laughs> like being in nature and I feel like I can really feel like my inner peace, just like breathe and be like, okay, I'm here, this is where I am, everything's good. So. I feel like I just answered this with around my girlfriend, but honestly, I think I'm always myself with us. These are probably the closest people in my life also. That's a good answer. Yeah. Thank it's you. good that you have that close friends. Yeah. It's cute. Thank you, Marissa. Yeah, appreciate nice it. Nice meeting you. Good meeting you too. Are you about to stay in your hammock like six oh. hours? What? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I don't, but what is your guys' TikTok name? It she is to achieve you. Thinking, last time, was the last time, don't wanna have a bad night. Throw a face smile on, I'ma just act nice. Gotta keep moving, but I'm